What a sight. Francis Ngannou got KO'd in the second round against Anthony Joshua. And this is what we expected to happen when he fought Tyson Fury, but it was delivered by Joshua, who is a power puncher. More than anything, he's a technical boxer who understands the game at the highest level. And his strategy to beat a big puncher like Ngannou was pretty simple, but deadly at the same time. You notice that he was constantly throwing that body jab in the first round. He was conditioning Ngannou to keep looking for the left hook because what he saw from Ngannou facing Tyson Fury was that whenever Fury threw the body jab, Ngannou always try to counter him with the left hook. And this is also taking place in this fight. So it was a good observation from Anthony Joshua to bring that punch out in this one. And what happens is, and there was a bunch of feints from Joshua as well, faking like he's going to enter with some kind of attack and, and Gano will keep giving him that left hook look. And this also explained why Joshua kept moving to his own left. He knew the main punch that Gano was looking for was the left hook. He wasn't as worried about the right hand. Everything Joshua did, Ngannou responded with throwing a left hook at him. And the left hook from Ngannou was kind of awkward, very wide. And Ngannou gets a big habit of keeping his arms wide open, which keeps a big opening on the center of his stance. So straight punches from Joshua are going to be free, creating this habit out of Ngannou to keep looking for that check left hook. And naturally, Ngannou's stance has a wide opening on the center. So all Joshua really needed was the one-two, and that's all he used. He didn't use the left hook that he's known for. He didn't use any of the uppercuts he's known for. He just had to work with two punches. It just need to know when to place those shots on Ngannou. So the body jabs are going to constantly keep the habit going. And because of the body jabs, Joshua is also able to evade to his own left side, getting away from these left hooks. Therefore, they're not really going to cause damage to him. And for the first knockdown, notice what Joshua does. He stands in front of Ngannou. This occurs because Francis Ngannou switched into the southpaw stance, which he was not ready to do. He wasn't ready to play with the lead feet. Immediately when he switched, you saw Joshua already understood what he had to do. He constantly was playing with the lead hand, trapping it, and stepping with his lead foot on the outside of his opponents and also notice that this right hand from Joshua misses because he was way too far away when he threw it in fact look at the punch he threw it straight into Ngannou and it got right in front of Ngannou's face and then fell short he needed to get closer to Ngannou so notice what he does to fix that when he drops him it showed that Ngannou was completely clueless on what Joshua was doing so notice right here they're both in their stances Joshua steps forward and Ngannou didn't react by moving anywhere he had a slight lean away, so he was in the same position, whereas Joshua is now closer, right? He let Joshua enter into this space freely because Ngannou just didn't know what Joshua was doing. He didn't put on any kind of offense. He didn't move into Joshua. He didn't move away to create more space and reset the distance. He just stood there in his stance. And then look what Joshua does immediately after stepping forward. He distributes his weight to his back foot. So when you step forward, you're bringing your weight forward as well. So he makes sure to lean away after stepping. So he can give Ngannou that illusion that he's still far away. So Ngannou feels safe at that distance. Joshua does not want to scare his prey away. If he was putting weight on his front foot and constantly leaning forward, he would have Ngannou a bit more on edge and might not be able to land with this kind of shot that he did. So by putting his weight on his back foot like this, he explodes off of it, takes the outside step with his lead foot, and quickly places that right straight through the center with absolutely no telegraph. There was no wind-up. There was no cocking back of the punch to make it look like it was going to be more powerful. There was no tell for Ngannou to see that right straight. His stance is wide again, beams Ngannou in the face, dropping him for the first time in his career. Ngannou's never been knocked down ever. He's rarely ever even been stunned. And this all happens in the first round. You can only imagine the confidence in Ngannou probably started to wither away. He's always known to have an iron chin. And to get hurt that badly and early in a fight must have been super discouraging and confusing for him. And then we go into the second knockdown. That was the real finish of the fight. Ngannou was not able to fight after that punch lands. It was Ngannou moving forward. This is the most dangerous thing about Anthony Joshua's strategy. Because he's constantly pepping him with jabs and keeping away, he wants to lure Ngannou into him. Even though Ngannou's arm span is an inch longer than Joshua's, he still didn't have this as management on him. Ngannou starts to get a little bit more aggressive and throwing out the jabs, but he wasn't throwing his jabs hard, and he was constantly falling short with them. This happened multiple times. Look at every single time Ngannou threw the jab, and also notice Joshua's reaction. Barely moving the way and saw the opening every time Ngannou dropped his hand. He knew to counter it with his right. So in the knockdown sequence, at this point, Joshua has a complete understanding of the distance that Ngannou throws the jab, and he doesn't even move his head this time. He actually gets ready to to throw his right hand before the jab is even fully extended from Ngannou. Complete confidence in Anthony Joshua right here. He in fact 
so much confidence he takes the jab at the very end of the extension where it's weak this is the difference between an olympic former world champion boxer compared to an inexperienced boxer the gap between distance management between these two fighters are so wide apart they're not even close in skill the guy literally took the jab at the end of the punch knowing that it was going to be weak from that distance and Nganu drops that left hand which he often does when he throws. This is actually a very common thing amongst MMA fighters in general. A lot of guys have a habit of keeping their hands lower to get ready to defend takedowns and also body kicks and knees. So this habit from the MMA fighter that is Francis Ngannou, he keeps dropping the left hand whenever he throws it, and this time it caused his demise. Dropping that left hand, he walked into a powerful right hand from Anthony Joshua, dropping him for the second time. And in boxing, getting dropped twice in a fight is very dangerous when it comes to brain damage. There's a very small probability Ngannou would be able to stand up and come back after getting knocked down for the second time. And Joshua absolutely knew this. The guy's way too inexperienced in this game to be able to defend himself after suffering this kind of damage, right? He doesn't know how to guard himself like an experienced boxer would do. He doesn't know how to use the ropes. He doesn't know how to move around the ring to avoid the damage like the highest level boxers. So Joshua literally gave him no respect in that moment and just threw a right overhand that knocked Nganu out cold. Nganu tried to put his guard up, but the punch got right through it. And that was a very bad knockout. I mean, a load of brain damage happened to Nganu here in such a short amount of time. I hope he takes a long time off before coming back into MMA or in boxing, whichever sport he wants to compete in. But for his sake, I think he should return to MMA. And who knows how his chin is going to be after that. But Anthony Joshua goes to further prove that he is one of the best heavyweight boxers on the planet. And it just goes to show you how good Usyk is. right? Because Usyk beat this guy twice. And I know a lot of people are saying it makes Tyson Fury look really bad. I understand that perspective. But does it also show that maybe Fury didn't take... And Ngannou that seriously? Could that have been the thing as well? But here's the thing that might go against that. If Fury didn't take Ngannou seriously, he must have after getting knocked down, right? If Tyson was not serious before, he was definitely serious after that. And he still was losing several exchanges to him. But the best method to beat an inexperienced boxer is to keep things as simple and basic as possible. Use the fundamentals and the textbook techniques in order to defeat this guy who's going to be a little bit more awkward and unorthodox with what he brings to this sport that he's rarely ever competed in. Tyson Fury didn't really do that. He also has a very unorthodox style and, and just weird things can happen when you fight him. But with Anthony Joshua style and Joseph Parker, like these guys are going to be a little bit more basic and in my opinion, more effective against Francis Ngannou than guys like Tyson Fury. But that's the end of Ngannou for now. I don't know if he's going to return. I know Joshua gave him a lot of respect and all credit and respect to Joshua for being so humble in victory right there. Giving Ngannou his flowers at the end, you know, saying he's an inspiration to us. He shouldn't turn his back on the sport. He should come back and compete again. But we do know that he needs to fight the PFL champion. He needs to fight Ferreira. And we'll see what happens after that. I mean, I hope he's okay. I hope his chin doesn't deteriorate, hope he's as healthy as he can be coming off of this, and we'll see what happens next for Francis Ngannou. And as for Anthony Joshua, I don't know what you do. Do you do him and Joseph Parker? But Joseph Parker has a, what, mandatory fight with Alexander Usyk or whoever wins between Usyk and Fury. I honestly say do Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder. That would be crazy. Or the loser of Usyk and Fury makes sense as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown, and if you did, make sure you give this a like, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you guys in the next video.